Chug along. So this video is gonna be basically about not only how to be a man, but being a man of the most high. Because as we see, our supposed leaders, whether it be in the Christian churches, whether it be Facebook teachers, YouTube teachers, Israelite camps on the corner fighting over a chair. We see a lack of emotional control, a lack of emotional discipline. And you can't lead a people if you can't lead yourself. You can't control your own emotions. You can't, there's no way you're gonna be able to lead somebody else because you have to be the example. You can't tell somebody something and you're not doing it yourself. You have to lead, not with your words, but with your actions. So we're gonna go by what scriptures say. And not only goes into controlling your anger, but actions on how to treat people, how to love your neighbor, giving to the poor, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting to the scriptures though. Protecting your family, all that. We'll start with Proverbs 3. I'm gonna do the whole verse. My child, do not forget my Torah, which is his laws, and let your heart Guard my commandments, for they add to you length of days and years of life and peace. Kindness and truth will not forsake you. Bind them upon your neck, inscribe them on the tablet of your heart. And you will find favor and goodly wisdom in the eyes of Elohim and man. Trust in Yah with all your heart and do not rely upon your own understanding. In all your ways know him and he will smooth your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear Yah and turn away from evil. It will be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Honor Yah with your wealth and with the first of all your pro produce, your tithes. Then your storehouses will be filled with plenty and the wine of your vats will burst forth. My child, do not despise Yahweh's discipline and do not despise his reproof. For Yahweh admonishes the one he loves and like a father, he mollifies the child. This goes into discipline in the children. There's another thing that a lot of us don't do. We let them just do whatever. Another part of being a man is being a disciplinarian, rewarding good behavior, disciplining bad behavior. Praiseworthy is a person who has found wisdom, a person who can derive understanding from it. For its commerce is better than the commerce of silver, and its produce is better than fine gold. It is more precious than pearls, and all your desires cannot compare to it. Length of days is at its right, and at its left, wealth and honor. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its pathways are peace. It is a tree of life to those who grasp it, and its supporters are praiseworthy. Yahweh found the earth with wisdom. He established its heavens, the heavens, with understanding. Through his knowledge, the deaths will cleave, and the heavens drip dew. My child, do not let them stray from your eyes. Safeguard the eternal Torah and its wise design. To be a man of Yah, you have to follow the Torah. Even if you're a Christian, whatever, the Torah is eternal. There is no getting rid of the Torah. That's just wickedness, that's lawlessness, because it's literally laws for our good. They will be life to your soul and a graceful ornament for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not fear. You will lie down and your sleep will be pleasant. You will not fear sudden terror, nor the holocaust of the wicked when it comes. For your heart will be a security and he will guard your feet from entrapment. It's another thing about being a man, especially a man in the Most High. No fear. How many times was Joshua told, "Do not, do not fear. Be strong and courageous." Because if you're really following the Most High, and you got that protection because you're keeping His commandments, 
you should really have no fear. That's another t a, a t a telltale sign of somebody that's really following the most high. They're not going to have fear. They're not going to fear demons or evil people or speaking the truth. Because if you got <laughs> if you got the creator of the universe behind you as your shield and your sword, nobody can, nothing can touch you, bro. That's how you be a man. You can't be scared to speak up for righteousness and to stand up against injustice and sin and wickedness. Oh, uh, <clears throat> go back a verse. He has. Oh wait. Oh shit! The uh, page turned back on me. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a quick a quick little verse from Proverbs two seven. He has secured the eternal Torah for the upright. It is a shield for those who walk in innocence to safeguard the paths of justice, for he protects the way of his devout ones. You found the Torah, you have no reason to fear. Back to Proverbs 3, 27. Do not withhold good from his rightful recipients when you have the power to do it. Do not tell your neighbor, leave and come back. Tomorrow I will give it when it is already by you. Do not devise evil against your neighbor. One who dwells securely near you. Do not quarrel with any man without cause. If he has done you no evil. Do not envy the man of violence. And do not choose any of his ways. For one who deviates. Is an abomination to Yahweh. And his counsel is with the upright. Yahweh's blight is upon the house of the wicked. He blesses the abode of the righteous. If one is drawn to the scoffers, he will scoff. If one is drawn to the humble, he will find favor. The wise inherit honor and fools generate disgrace. So basically, birds of a feather flock together. You're going to be a man of the most high. You can't be chilling with all these wicked people. Because even in Psalms 1, David said he did not sit in the council of the wicked. You know, your boy Jebus loved sitting with sinners and all that. But you are who you hang with. Another way to be a man of the most high. So that's one. Uh, I'm going to get into a lot of these verses regarding discipline and refraining from anger. Because it's really, you can't control your emotions. You're, uh, you, you're not really a masculine. You don't really have masculine energy like that. There's a time to get angry. Everybody has a breaking point. Everybody has, you know, situations. Maybe you, maybe you ain't been sleeping good, whatever, whatever. Everybody has the bad days. But if you are constantly angry and constantly yelling and allowing and fight, getting in fights over small things, letting somebody's opinion of you, small words, lead you to strike them, and you just or shoot somebody because of words, and you're very effeminate. There's some things the Most High doesn't like. That's another thing. Uh, actually, I forgot to go over a verse I, I read. It had to do with accountability. Being a man, especially a man of the Most High, is being accountable for your actions. Accountable for your own sins. Repenting, turning away from those sins, not returning to your vomit. And not putting on another man to die for your sins. Taking accountability for your own actions. There's some things the Most High hates. So we follow these to be a man of the Most High. Proverbs 6, I'll start at 12. The lawless man is a man of iniquity. He goes forth with distortion of the mouth. He winks with his eyes. He shuffled. No, that one mouth. Shuffles with his feet, points with his fingers, giving blame to somebody else. Duplicity is in his heart. He plots evil all the time. He stirs up strife. Therefore, his undoing will come suddenly. He will be broken in an instant without healing. Yahweh hates these six, but the seventh is an abomination to his soul, of his soul. Haughty eyes, a false tongue, and hands spilling innocent blood, a heart plotting iniquitous thoughts, feet hastening to run to evil, a false witness spouting lies, and one who stirs up strife among brothers. So 
all that gossip, all the wicked conversations for no reason, really. I can see if you're calling somebody out on some weird doctrine and stuff like that. And, you know, just real quick, 623. For the commandment is a lamp and the Torah is light. JC is not light. The Torah, the law is light. And also got that Psalm 119, 105 on my neck. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. what time it is real quick because I got an alarm I want my alarm to mess with my video so I'm I ain't got too much longer Probably gonna get interrupted in the middle of it. I might just have to do a do a two part. Got my twelve o'clock alone. Try to go through this real quick. Proverbs eleven nine. Some of these verses don't really match up because I think I, I wrote down the KJV verse and it's different than my Tanakh. So it might, it might be a little of a verse or two of. False lips are an abomination to Yahweh, but those who act in faith are his desire. You don't like lies. You want to be a man of the Most High, be a man of your word. Proverbs 14, 17. A short-tempered person acts foolishly, and a person who designs evil is hated. There's another 13, 24. One who spares his rod hates his child, but he who loves him, loves him disciplines him in his youth. If you love your children, you're going to discipline them, you're going to teach them the right way. And give them some kind of punishment for being bad. Show them the right way. Proverbs 14, 29. Slowness to anger shows much understanding, but a short-spirited person elevates foolishness. So all them camp leaders out there that can't control themselves and being a terrible example for our youth, especially Israel, claiming, claiming the most high. A gentle reply turns away wrath, but a galling word incites anger. The tongue of the wise will enhance wisdom, but the mouth of fools will spout foolishness. The wrathful man incites strife, but the slow to anger calms a quarrel. That's Proverbs 15, 18. Go to 1632. Actually, 16. Right here is talking about People, all, all these people talking about their kings and this and that. Everybody, everybody's a king. There is charm on the lips of a king. In judgment, his mouth will not deceive. God have righteous judgment. Not false witnessing. Not judging the matter without having the facts first or seeking out the matter. Not having um, respect of persons. Like, if wrong is wrong, right is right, no matter who it comes from. To do evil is an abomination for kings, for a throne is established through righteousness. The desire of kings is righteous lips, and he will love one who speaks of right words. 
16, 18, pride precedes destruction and arrogance comes before failure. You be a male on the most high, you gotta be humble. I'm not saying you can't have confidence in yourself, but confidence in the most high for the most part, more than anything, and not being braggadocious or, you know, there's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. 1632, he who is slow to anger is better than a strong man and a master of his passions is better than a conqueror of a city. See, these are the people, people who exemplify these verses are the ones we need, who need to be the leaders, not people who can't control themselves, who let every little thing turn into a fight. So if they're not showing these qualities, they're obviously not studying the Torah, they're obviously not living Torah, and they need to sit down and let the real ones lead. Proverbs 18, 13. He who answers before he has heard, it will be foolishness and humiliation for him. Death, this is uh, 20 verse, verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love to use it will eat its fruit. So if they don't really watch what they say, if they just... A fool speaks his whole mind and don't really think about what he's going to say. They're not a leader in material. Proverbs 19, 11. It is intelligent of a person to be slow to anger and his splendor to ignore an offense. I'm fighting over chairs. The IOIC and uh, what was it? I forgot. I forgot the other camp. Fighting over, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be the leaders of the people. You're supposed to be coming together for the community, but y'all beefing like gangs. Come on, yo. Proverbs twenty and seven: One who walks in his innocence is a righteous man. Fortunate are his sons after him. When the king sits on the seat of judgment, he scatters all who are evil in his eyes. Proverbs 21, 3. Doing what is right and just is preferable to Yahweh than an offering. That goes back to obedience being better than sacrifice. Part 2, my alarm interrupted and ended my video. We left off at Proverbs 21, 3. Where it was uh, obedience, basically obedience is better than a sacrifice. Twenty-one and six. The accumulation of treasures through a false tongue is smitten vapor. They seek death. There's no honor in getting rich through deceit, deception, through wicked ways. Your karma will come back on you. Karma is bi biblical. You reap what you sow. That's karma. And there's a bunch of verses that talk about getting your riches in a wicked way. That's it's going. That's why I call it a vapor because it's going to disappear just as quickly as you got it. Out here robbing people, it's going to be gone. You can have less than you had before you before you uh, did all that wickedness. Proverbs 21, 13, one who shuts his ear to the eye, to the cry of the pauper or the poor, he too will call out and not be answered. So a man of the most high isn't really selfish, especially when it comes to people in need. You're going to be the light to them. You're going to help when you can. So one day you might need it and it'll come back to you. I just gotta read this one real quick. It's highlighted. Proverbs 21, 18. And this kills JC. The evildoer will be an atonement for the righteous one and the faithless one for the upright. And you say a righteous man is gonna be in the place of a wicked person. That's that's wicked in itself. Cause the most high he doesn't delight in an, an innocent person being judged. Or something they didn't do and i forgot what scripture that was too i got it in my notes but that's not the point of this 
<clears throat> I just I just seen it. I got it. Just in case you JC lovers. Anyway, uh, probably was 22. A good name is preferred to wealth and goodly favor than silver and gold. Your name. Sometimes your name, your word is all you got. I don't care what you what you accomplished, especially if you did it wickedly. If you're not a man of your word, I can't trust your what you say if your actions don't match your, your words. That don't mean shit to me. Proverbs 22. Oh, yeah. Let's do 22, 22. Do not rob the destitute because he is destitute. And do not oppress the poor man in the gate of judgment. 22 and 9. One with a good eye will be blessed, for he has given of his bread to the poor. Twenty two and twenty four. Oh man, hold up. Let me go back into that where it said don't oppress the poor. In the next verse, twenty two, twenty three. For Yahweh will take up their grievance, he will steal the soul of those who will steal from them. That's deep. Anyway, uh, yeah, don't be stealing. That's that's already that's in the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Can't be a man of the most high and be stealing, for one thing. That's one of the main ones. Anyway, uh, 22, 24 through 26. Do not, be friend, do not befriend an angry man and do not come together with a man of wrath. Lest, you're, lest you learn his ways and take a snare for your soul. Do not be among those who shake hands among the guarantors for loans. And just don't. Basically, a bird or feather flock together. You wouldn't want to befriend an angry man, so obviously you wouldn't want to be an angry man. You don't want to be in control of your spirit. You don't want to. You don't want to absorb other people's spirits or ways or energy. Proverbs. Hit this one first. Proverbs 24, 23. Hold on. I'm going to start off real quick. A couple verses up. Twenty-four, start at eighteen. No, nineteen. Do not assimilate among evildoers. Do not envy the wicked. For there will be no lasting outcome to evil, but the lamp of the wicked shall die out. Fear Yahweh, my child, and the king. Do not mix with inconsistent people, for their disaster will arise suddenly, and who knows the punishment of both. These things too are for the wise to consider. Showing favoritism and judgment is not good. One who tells a wicked person you are righteous. The peoples will curse him. The nations will anathemize him. Verse 26. Do not offer vain testimony against your fellow to endear yourself with your lips. And do not say as he has done for me, so I'll do for him. I will reward the man according to his acts. It's in quotations. And let the most high handle things. Proverbs 25. It's for all you kings out there. Proverbs 25 and 2. It is the honor of Elohim to conceal a matter, but it is the honor of kings to search out a matter. Twenty-five and eight. Do not be quick to enter into strife. Unless you will know what you will do in the end when your fellow humiliates you. Pursue your quarrel with your friend, but do not reveal another's confidence. Don't be telling if somebody told you a secret and told you don't tell nobody. 
Don't be a tail bearer, gossiper. That's that ain't man like, bro. Especially if they entrusted you with something, not and they specifically said, "Don't be telling nobody." Don't be telling nobody. Lest a listener disgrace you and you be unable to retract your slander. A soft tone breaks strong anger. It's another way to be a man in the most high. Seeking peace, be prepared for war, but seek peace. Every every situation, you don't gotta react, especially in a extra way and try to fight over every little thing so a lot of things ain't worth it if you uh power is 25 21 if your foe is hungry feed him bread if he is thirsty give him water to drink for you will be scooping coals on his head and y'all will reward you power is 26 and one like snow in the summer and rain at the harvest, so does honor not be fit of food. Like a bird that wanders off, like a swallow that flies off, so an unwarranted curse comes back to he who utters it. Don't be throwing curses on people for no reason. That's why some of y'all are facing curses right now, because y'all wanted me, <laughs> y'all wanted me to suffer for whatever reason try to bear false witness on me and it just comes back on you and y'all know who y'all y'all know who i'm talking about if the shoe fits get another size get another pair <clears throat> proverbs 26 and 11 like a dog that returns to his vomit so is a fool who repeats his foolishness and be a man of most high True repentance is turning away from your sin, not going back to it. Proverbs 27 and 2. Let another praise you, not your own mouth. A stranger, not your own lips. It goes back into pride, arrogance. Proverbs 28 and 4. Those who forsake the Torah praise the wicked, but the keepers of Torah contend with them. Men of evil will not discern the inevitable judgment, but those who seek Yah will understand all. Better a poor man who walks in innocence than a rich man who perverts his ways. One who preserves the Torah is an understanding son, but the companion of swillers, never even heard that word in my life, Humiliates his father. One who multiplies his wealth through interest, interest and increase gathers it for the patron of the poor. If one turns aside his ear from hearing the Torah, his prayer too will be considered an abomination. Skip down to 28, 28 and 13. One who conceals his sins will not succeed. But he who confesses and forsakes them will be granted mercy. Accountability. Part of being a man. Verse 18. Start at 17. A man guilty of bloodshed will flee until the grave. No one will support him. One who walks in innocence will be saved. But one who perverts his ways will fall in one of the ways. Verse 21, to show favoritism and judgment is not good. For a loaf of bread, as a bribe, man will have become a sinner. One over eager for wealth has an evil eye. He does not know what may befall him, that want may befall him. So yeah, don't be don't be seeking wealth for your own selfish gains. So you can drive a Rari or uh, um have 10 cars that you don't even drive acres and acres hundreds of acres of land and you're not using it for the good of other people 
You shouldn't want wealth just to be wealthy. You should want it for a specific reason to help people. Twenty-eight, twenty-seven. One who gives to a pauper will not let. One who averts his eyes will suffer many curses. Twenty-nine, fourteen. If a king judges the destitute honestly, his throne will be established forever. I'll read that. Alright, uh, I'll basically get the gist of it. I'm gonna try to get this done before my 1230 alarm goes off. And there was another one, Nehemiah 4 and 14, basically saying to protect your family, protect your house. Do not fear. When war comes, basically, you're gonna be a man if you're a man, especially a man in the most high. You, you ain't afraid of death for one, especially when it comes to protecting your family. You ain't gonna run away like a little. There's a time to be smart and wise, and when you see evil, you know you you escape. But you protect the life of your loved ones. Psalm 34, 13. Who is the man who desires life, who loves days of seeing good? Guard your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of Yah are toward the righteous, his ears to their cry. The face of Yah is against evildoers to cut off their memory from earth. Psalm 37 and 8. Desist from anger and forsake wrath. Do not compete. It brings but harm. Something not, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot more that I, that I didn't write down. This is just a quick little glimpse. But a lot of it is restraining from anger and strife. Being righteous as possible in every situation. Which these leaders are not doing. Psalm 94 and 16. Who will rise up for me against evildoers? Who will stand up for me against the doers of iniquity? It's the most I ask. Who's going to stand up for against all, this, all these wicked leaders and all these false doctrines? Psalm 103 and 8. Compassionate and gracious is Yah, slow to anger and abundant of kindness. He will not quarrel for eternity, nor will he forever bear a grudge. He's slow to anger. He's long-suffering. You know, he gives he gives people's chances. He, even in the stories for uh, for Israel, Yasserah, he gave people chances over and over. He forgave them when they returned, and then they kept doing the same stuff. So I mean, that's when the punishment comes in. He tries to give you a chance, and you just spit on his face. There's a few more I want to get to. Jeremiah 9, 23, 24. Well, it starts at 22 here. Thus say Yah, let not the wise man glorify himself with his wisdom, and let, let not the strong man glorify himself with strength. Let not the rich man glorify himself with his wealth. For only with this may one glorify himself, contemplating, you can call it meditating, and knowing me. For I am Yah who does kindness, justice, and righteousness in the land. For in these is my desire, thus say Yah. So that's how Most High is. You want to be as close to the Most High as possible. You don't want to be arrogant. You don't want to be boasting of van uh, vanity, vain things. <clears throat> See, that's basically the gist of it. What was Zephaniah 313? Zephaniah. It's the last one I have written down. And there's a lot more. You go through all the Proverbs that teach you not to be uh, angry, quick to anger, and being peaceful as possible when you can.
There's a time as a, what proverb was that? It was Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time for everything. Time for war, time for peace, time for anger, time for, you know, there's a time for all that. It's not 24 seven. There's a balance. But for the most part, you should be a peaceful person. Where is that for now? I know it's a real small place. Remnant of Yasharal will not commit corruption. They will not speak falsehood, and the deceitful tongue will not be found in their mouth, for they will graze and lie down with none to make them afraid. So if you you out here thinking you're the remnant, but you got a deceitful tongue, just telling you what the remnant is gonna do. They're not gonna have deception in their mouth and speak falsehood, which comes back to the being a king and not having favoritism and judgment lying on somebody false witnessing all that stuff comes back to that and you can't be a, you can't be a ruler or a leader in general if you have no control of your anger that's what happened with Saul the people chose Saul because he was tall uh, apparently long tan and handsome uh, whatever you want to call him they didn't consider David his, David's father didn't even consider him all his sons got considered he wasn't even considered he was the last one that people thought, but it was his heart, his obedience to the Most High. Who the people choose, not always gonna be the best option to the Most High chooses. So, and it's gonna be apparent by whoever's supposed to lead the people, his actions and the words come out of his mouth. And he's gonna speak against wickedness and he's gonna stand for righteousness. And he's not gonna fold, he's not gonna have a spirit of what's it called? I can't even think of the word right now. Uh, damn, what's that word? <laughs> compromise. It's not gonna have a spirit of compromise. And switch up and be righteous this day, be wicked this day. It's gonna be balanced. So, yeah, that's basically it for the day, y'all. Choose your leaders wisely. Choose how you lead wisely. Lead your family, lead yourself. Be an example for the people that's watching. All praise to the Most High alone. Shalom.